So as we learned earlier in the semester, all circuits radiate electromagnetic energy of some point um, at some time. Uh, if there's a transition in the current, whether that's between um, a binary transition or whether that is because there's an AC signal traveling along the circuit path, there will be radiation. Uh, we also know even if it's just a DC current, there's there's not radiation, but there is a, a, a magnetic field that's established around the, the trace that's carrying that DC current. And so if all circuits radiate, well then what is an antenna? And uh, an antenna is a specifically designed circuit. It's a structure that transitions an electromagnetic wave from being guided. And by guided, we mean um, the properties of the electromagnetic wave as it is in a transmission line. And so this antenna structure transitions the EM wave from being guided, like it's in a coax cable, to propagating in free space, or, uh, it, or it does the opposite. It will take a... Um, free space wave and transition it from free space into being a guided wave in some sort of um, cable medium such as coax. And so this is a means for radiating or receiving radio waves. So an antenna is a means for radiating or receiving radio waves. So in this definition, the guiding device is usually coax line or other wave guide that transports electromagnetic energy from a transmitting source to an antenna um, or from an antenna to a receiver. So that gives us the first category of antennas is that we can either have a uh, transmitting antenna, as I'm showing here, um, which is set, taking electromagnetic in information from a source, putting it in a coax cable and causing it to radiate, or we can have a receiving antenna, which takes electromagnetic radiation from the air and puts it back into a guide. So that can be a, a receiving antenna. So here we've got a transmitting antenna. Here we see that the antenna is receiving. In the transmitting mode, a, a generator with source impedance ZG sends a voltage and uh, current wave along a transmission line that has a characteristic impedance of uh, Z0. The transmission line will have a characteristic impedance of Z0. The antenna is going to act as a load, and it's going to be connected to the T-line, and it's got a characteristic impedance typically of uh, what we will call ZA. The load resistance, RL, represents conduction and dielectric losses associated with the physical structure of the antenna. So this is like copper loss and stuff like that. And RR represents the radiation resistance, which is a representation of the power that gets radiated into free space by the antenna. So we can see that ZA, the total impedance of the antenna, consists of three parts. Uh, XA, which is the reactance of the antenna itself, the radiation resistance, and the load resistance of the antenna. So there are three parts. I know that those two are in series, but typically we will we'll separate RL and RR into two different um, portions. So connecting this overall ZA to the transmission line, which has a characteristic impedance of Z0, is going to create this impedance boundary right here. And therefore, uh, the traveling wave from ZG towards ZA can be reflected back towards the source, creating a standing wave pattern in the transmission line. As we saw in the analysis of T-lines from many lectures ago, this can cause localized voltage current and maximum and mins, and if the intensity of this standing wave is sufficiently large, this could cause arcing in the transmission line. So often what we'll have to do in addition to creating an antenna is we have to match the antenna to the waveguide here. The losses due to the transmission line, the uh, antenna itself, and the standing wave are all undesirable. And the goal of antenna design is to achieve maximum power transfer from the source into RR. Line losses can be minimized by the use of low-loss T-lines. And the ohmic and dielectric losses in the antenna can be minimized by decreasing RL by using good materials for the construction of the conductor inside of the antenna. This, of course, the standing wave can be minimized by matching the impedance of the antenna here to the characteristic impedance of this transmission line. 
which is just the same, prop, uh, uh, same procedure as matching loads to transmission lines. So a similar equivalent model will exist for a receiving antenna. I've shown it for a transmitting antenna here. A similar model exists for the receiving antenna, but the source is replaced by a receiver. The radiation resistance is then used to represent the energy transfer from the free space wave into the antenna. So given that general overview of antenna, um, we will see throughout the lecture that in addition to just receiving or transmitting energy, an antenna is often designed to optimize the radiation in a specific direction, i.e. antennas are designed to be directional devices. And different antenna types have been designed to have different directional properties at different frequencies. The first category of antennas that we have are called what, what are called wire antennas, such as a monopole, a dipole, or a loop, and also a helical antenna. And these are just these are the common forms of antennas that you're used to seeing on televisions, on um, uh, on your car. The, the antenna on your car for radio reception is a is a wire antenna. The next type that we would talk about is uh, micro strip or patch antennas, which are antennas made on printed circuit boards and in various configurations. They can be square, circular, or rectangular. Uh, here's some pictures of uh, some patch antennas. These um, would be similar to what you would find in, inside of a cell phone or a, uh, a wireless internet card. Uh, array antennas, I'm, I'm not showing any array antennas here, but these are arrays of either wire or microstrip antennas, um, and they can be connected together to form uh, different configurations of antennas. You may have heard of these, such as Yagi, Log Periodic, UDI antennas. And these array antennas, um, if if you ever had broadcast TV at your house and you had one of those really funny looking antennas that had all these elements along it, that's a Yagi uh, antenna. It's an array of a bunch of dipoles and what are called reflector elements. Uh, the next type of antenna that we have are called um, aperture antennas, and these are antennas that use variations on a waveguide. Uh, very commonly, the, the shape that's very common is, is horns. These are typically extremely high frequency antennas. And then finally, um, for, for deep space communications, we've developed um, concentrating antennas, which are called reflectors antennas, and uh, these use a parabolic dish to focus electromagnetic energy on some sort of receptor. And so these you might see as like deep space uh, or satellite communication style antennas that operate at extremely high frequencies and typically are dealing with extremely small signals. In this class, we're going to really uh, limit ourselves to uh, dipole, wire, and uh, monopole antennas, and then these, these patch antennas. So that's what we'll be covering over the next four lectures.